Good morning. Welcome to the Good Morning Vibe Tribe. It's Monday. Right out of the way that or <laughs> um I had an amazing weekend. I was at the Ohio retreat, or not retreat, oh my goodness, the Ohio training. But it, for me, it felt like a little mini retreat because I was blessed enough to be able to spend time with Lisa Chastity and Courtney one-on-one. -on -one. It was just amazing. And um, we start our Mondays out with gratitude. I use a book called The Morning Rituals, which is a lot like the um, five-minute journal. In the mornings, you write down, you know, your I am's what you're grateful for, five things that you're grateful for. I like to really dig and do, write down something that I'm grateful for that happened in the last 24 hours, my goals for the day, how I'm feeling. And it also has a reminder at the top for like silence, meditation, gratitude, exercise, reading, just giving me that little kick in the butt. Like, don't forget to do these things. And it's really been amazing. Since I started practicing gratitude, it's something that I never really did before. I used to think, oh, something like that's just for teenagers, not for me. And it's just made a world of difference. And it is even more. This one's called The Morning Rituals. I found it on Amazon under $5. Um, since I started practicing gratitude and then got into the digging and something that happened the last 24 hours, I found that I have more things to be grateful for than not. And that has been just amazing. Um, does anybody here do anything differently in the morning for their gratitude? Five minute journal, anything else? Okay, dokey. Um, Melissa, I saw you commenting. What do you do in the mornings? Um, so honestly, I wake up like about 4 30 in the morning just because like I love my morning routine. Um, I just need that extra moment before like chaos hits. I have three kids and they are all very early risers. Um, and so they're up about six. And so if I don't get up early, then I don't have like me time. So I get up and I just, I do my affirmations. I do my, I am statements. Um, I have, here's like a book that I just caught. It's I affirm. And so it kind of is, I'm doing it alongside of the self-love journal or the self-love thing that Lisa's doing. And it's just like, I'm learning so much about myself, um, and just self-love in general. And it's, I don't know, it's changing so much for me. And so I get all that done. And, um, of course I spend a moment, you know, saying my, um, prayers and devotions. I also do a bit of yoga in the morning. I just really like to stretch my body and get like the blood flowing. And I usually do like once all that is over, I get my kids up, I do all that routine, get them off to school. Then I go to the gym, um, and just kind of start my day. So I just, I am very much like you. I have to have that time in the morning. I love it. Um, but just taking the moment to truly be grateful for, you know, like you said, things that happen within the last 48 hours. Um, it's so super important to start your guys, like your guys' day. If you don't do it, literally, you don't need even anything. Like you don't need a fancy book. You don't need grab a napkin, like a crown, like whatever you can do and just write it down. Like there's something in the power of writing it down. So yeah, that's how I start. Awesome. Um, Tiffany. So I actually do mine at night. I might be weird, <laughs> but that's how I end my day because when I wake up, that's what I remember. So I do my gratitude at night after everybody goes to sleep. Um, and it's just, it's just the me time. Um, so I sit down with um, my journal. I don't know which one I'm on right now. Honestly, I can pull it out. Um, but that's what I do. I sit down at the end of the day and reflect um, and kind of set myself up for the next day. I absolutely love that. 
might actually try that. <laughs> and another really important thing that I found is to plan my week ahead, to batch some of the things that I'm going to do. I do this because I'm busy. I'm a homeschool mom. I'm also a grandmom. I'm also very active in different things within my community. Um, Guardians of the Abused. Uh, I'm in Narcotics Anonymous. So I also have me. I have a lot going on. And I plan my week ahead of time. If I don't, then I find myself sometimes be like, there's just so much to talk about. What am I going to post about? And then I can't think of anything because it's just like so much going on in my head. Melissa? Honestly, dude, I'm, I'm the same way. Um, I am not able to always hop on, um, Megan's batching zoom, um, whenever she does it, but I always catch the recording before Sunday evening so that I can legit plan my week. Um, this helps me reduce so much stress and anxiety because I will sit there. Like, I'm not kidding you. I will sit there for 30, 45 minutes, just like rummaging through my head, rummaging through my photos, trying to like find something if I don't pre-plan. Um, and so I absolutely have to do that before I usually do it. Um, depending on what time the chiefs play Sunday, um, it's either in the morning or in the evenings. Um, last night was an evening game, so I had to get it done early, but I, I literally, I will go through and I use my calendar and my phone. Um, a lot of people might use their notes section or, you know, something like that, but in my calendar, I can legit type out every single post and have at least one to two every single day lined up. Um, and obviously if things change or whatever, you can, you know, move them around and stuff, but having those pre-planned and having alarms go off with times that are popular that I need to post and I can just quick go copy paste that use the photo or take a photo. Um, and it just, it legit, like I'm telling you how much de-stress that is. <laughs> um, so yes, I always pre-plan my entire week. Um, I've been trying to meal prep a little bit lately and just get back in a groove of things. Um, my husband's finally going to be going back to work soon. So this will be awesome. I just, I'm a very scheduled person. So this just helps me a ton. That's awesome. Okay. We're going to find out what Tiffany does and then we're going to find out what Melanie does. Oh, let Melanie go. She is busting at the seams. I've been watching her screen for like the past two minutes and she's just like going to explode if we don't let her talk. Ah, thanks, Tiff. All right. So batch working and planning is 100% me. Um, those who know me, Shannon, you know, every Sunday night I host a Zoom for my team to plan work, plan, batch work, and it all. I use an app called Unfold. Now, before I use my Unfold app throughout the week, so if I'm at the park with my goddaughters, if I'm at the mall with my goddaughters, you can see that I've got like my arm out and you can see my patch, but you can also see the kids in the background of the picture. You can't no, necessarily see their faces, but you can see them. Um, if I'm getting my car fixed like I am right now, you're going to see that black label going, oh my God, I'm having a friggin' day. My car was hit, whatever. Um, I have an app called sticky note on my phone. Like Melissa, I have all of my posts planned, my business posts, my mini posts. I have my interactive posts. The only post I don't have planned is my lifestyle posts because life is life. And well, let's be real. Anything can happen in that week, in that day. So I don't plan my life, my lifestyle posts, but I don't do a lifestyle post every day. Well, I do do a lifestyle post, but I intertwine thrive in my lifestyle posts every day. I have my meals planned. I have date nights with my hubby planned. I have time with my individual teammates planned. I have time with my godchildren planned that I'm not on my phone. I have time every week for myself planned out, like that I don't answer my phone. I don't do anything. I either I'm sitting on my couch gaming video games or I'm out for a walk by myself. I have my whole week planned out because when I started this, I was a full-time student working back shift. 
and didn't have time to run a business on the side. So I learned how to batch work, how to plan my posts and save myself that 20 minutes because I didn't have that 20 minutes. So this is something that I'm very strong at and it drives my husband insane. If go ahead. Yeah, I'm the same. I'm very organized. Like I'm, I'm a freak, you guys. <laughs> we talked about this at the Toledo training. Um, a little bit batch working and just staying organized um, with, I'm the same as Melanie. I have X, Y, and Z planned. Like I'm, I'm surprised at this point, I don't have bathroom breaks planned, honestly. Like, <laughs> um, but you know, I, I keep a general idea like throughout the week, Monday morning motivation, you know, Tuesday transformation. And I got this from Chas. Um, but just I keep like to the same kind of sometimes I'll change it up but I use my group a lot I use my group to pull posts and I've I've talked about my group a lot um it's just a private group that I keep all of my content uploaded into for Thrive um so that's what I do That is awesome. I don't want to get into too much of what happened at the training, but I do have to shout out Tiffany. I um, was blessed to sit next to her on a panel and just the vibe I got from her made me so relaxed. And I'm like thinking about what I'm going to say, but also getting everything that she was talking about. And I'm like, oh, this is good. I got to make a mental note. So, Tiffany, you did an awesome job. Thank you so much for making it so comfortable. I'm just a chill person. Like, I, I was super nervous at first, um, but you know what? They were, you know, everybody's there to just learn. And, you know, you learned, I learned, everybody learned. And that's, I don't know, it was just, it was absolutely amazing. Absolutely insane. So if you guys have a local... Shannon drove eight hours, you guys, eight hours to this local. Like I got out of the truck at the church and I was like, that's not, cause I didn't know she was coming. I was like, that's not her. And I ran up and I gave her the biggest hug. Cause I was like, I didn't think you would, you know, eight hours, you guys for a training, you need to have that sort of dedication to your business. It was definitely life changing. I learned more about myself than just the business this weekend. And like I said, I was extremely blessed because I got to spend personal time with some amazing women this weekend. And in my 48 years, other than having kids, that was like the most magical moment I had. And um, like I said, it taught me a lot about me other than just the business. It's not every day a person gets to sit on a boat on Lake Erie and watch a sunset and just peacefulness. It was just beautiful. And like Tiffany said, if you can get to a training, even if you don't have that one-on-one -on -one time, it's still mind-blowing. It's the personal connection you feel with people that you're hearing from top leaders and some of you might have been like me in the beginning and be like, oh my goodness, they're millionaires. I, I don't know if I can talk to them. They are just like you and me, 100%. And they will do everything they can to make you feel comfortable. You just need to open your mouth. Um, yeah, Melissa, I want to... Oh, sorry, sorry. Go ahead, Tiff. No, that's okay. I just want to go off of that really quick, you guys. Okay, go I had a moment on Saturday that just was like overpowering. So my first local was in Toledo. Okay. It was January, 2020, I think before, for everything, the world lost its mind. Okay. We had a training in Toledo. Um, it was my first time meeting Chas. It was my first time meeting Lisa. Drew was there. Like it was, it was so nerve wracking for me. I was just a bundle of nerves, you guys. In fact, I did not even go up to Lisa or Chess. They came up to me. Okay. I was so nervous because I viewed them as like <laughs> these Lavelle celebrities, which they deserve, but I viewed them as, you know, they don't care. 
who I am. You know what I mean? Like that was my mindset. I was like, they're not going to care. I was wrong. Okay. They came up to me. Both of them did. And you guys, from that moment on the relationship that I have with each of them separately is just insane. Like it's, it was at the same location. We were at that church and I, I, it, it was just, it was insane. I went from, you know, sitting in the audience, being a bundle of nerves, just sitting there to speaking at the same place a year and a half later. Like it was, it was absolutely insane. So don't ever, if you, if you guys are at an event and you see somebody that you, you know, you're scared to talk to, or, you know, you want to meet, but you're scared that they don't, don't just do it. Just walk up, introduce yourself. Like they care. They care so freaking much. Exactly. Same year, I was at Syracuse. And I walked in and I'm like, scared to death. Jamie Pekka walked up to me. She goes, oh my goodness, Shannon, I'm so glad you made it. And I'm like, you know me? <laughs> it was just crazy. Melanie, you got your hand raised. Go ahead. Um, for Team Canada, Chastity and I have been in contact. Thank you to Shannon. Um, we are looking at trying to get a bunch of thrivers together here in Nova Scotia. And she's thinking maybe eventually down the road, once COVID's not a thing, coming more often up just to help us. So keep that in mind, Team Canada. We do have eventually a local coming up. We don't know when. Obviously, with numbers rising, we don't know what's going to happen, but keep that in mind. We're going to try. And even if you guys can't make it to like a big local with like Chas, Lisa and everybody, have a small local in your living room with two or three other thrivers and FaceTime another leader in just to help. That kind of local will help you guys as well. Um, I've been I did that the other day. I had a couple of thrivers here at my house and we all just chitty chatted. So keep that in mind. Yes, I love it. Melissa, you want to talk about locals, events, anything like that? Um, I know that they are super important. <clears throat> um, I am um, just booked a room. I'm going to go to the Minnesota local that they have coming up. I think it's like the October 8th slash 9th. Um, so I'm super excited to get to that just because I know like everything that you guys have been talking about, like getting to that like local or that little group meeting, I swear to God, it like fills your cup. It does something for you. It empowers you. Um, you just, you get a whole nother, like you, you leave with a whole nother vibe every time. It's like, it's a different, it's a different thing for me. Like we went to conference in Texas and just being around those, those people. And, you know, like Chas stopped, like after our workout session in the morning, she stopped and took a picture, you know, asked how I was doing and they do care guys, you know, you're scared to go up to these people. Don't be scared. Um, they're normal people just like us. Um, they love us and we love them. Um, and that makes them feel good too. You know what I'm saying? Like as a leader, like coming up to, you know, like, I think, oh my gosh, I don't know if she's on, but Rachel, we were, she's on my team at Burger. She <laughs> had this like random lady come up to her at conference and legit told her that she follows her and she is so inspired by her lives. And I mean, just seeing Rachel get so touched by that, um, you know, she didn't know people were plugging into her and that just like brightened her into an entire different person. And so don't be afraid to tell them, you know, how much they inspire you and stuff. Um, and what they're doing <clears throat> to help you, um, just because that is always good feedback. But guys, yeah, definitely trailing back to that, just getting to those locals and plugging in, you know, even if it's to these Zooms, if you don't have a local near you, plan one. I legit, oh my gosh, okay, so I just got out of my comfort zone and um, I'm not, like, I I will pass out if I get in front of like a group of people. I shake, I my palms sweat, like I sweat. It's like it's a thing. Um, 
And so I planned my own local um, and I just hosted one last month and I had Stephanie Grachek. She flew in um, and same with Stephanie Rose. She came as well and so did a girl, Tiffany, on my team and just having them there. We went to the Chiefs game. They were playing the Minnesota Vikings. Like it was so perfect. Um, But just like we had so much fun and we filled our cups and I hosted this bomb event Um, it was way out of my comfort zone, but guys, I grew so much from that because there hasn't been any locals in my area. So I hosted one and I am always like the person, like I had to be the host of the hostess of the hostess. Like I was just like, had to make sure everybody was there so that, you know, I felt like Stephanie was coming. So I had to like make it this big thing. And she's just like, girl, relax. Like, it's just a thing, you know, like, and so just having her there and like telling me like, calm down. It's okay. (laughs) They're normal people. Like it was so cool just to hang out with her, but guys just do it. You know, if there's not none around you, do it. I, I urge you to, um, I challenge you to, because the growth that comes from that, I can't even tell you, like, I, I, I just can't even explain. Um, so I love it. Like, I, I don't know, like pushing me out of my comfort zones with every event that I get to. (laughs) Yeah. Shannon and I were talking at the Toledo event and we're like, why don't we do this? Like looking at a room full of people, who we could get together, <clears throat> excuse me, because I'm two and a half hours from Toledo. She's obviously eight hours, but, you know, <laughs> she, well, we know she'll travel, okay? Um, but I was like, why are we not, like her and I, why are we not putting this together? Because, you know what, it's, it's nice to have, you know, your sideline sisters, it's nice to have those people, but you guys, the feeling of being in a room of different thrivers is a whole new level hearing somebody else's stories I'm getting goosebumps like literally just hearing different you know stories feeling different energy is absolutely amazing so if you're in that area you know uh, hell I don't care if you're from Florida if you want to fly up you do you boo um but you know Shannon and I were thinking about you know doing more locals in this area um, I haven't told my husband yet, but I think I might try to go to Minnesota local just because, and that's 13 hours for me, um, just because of how refreshed I feel, um, how, you know, my, my cup is literally overflowing. It's just, it's such an amazing feeling. It's pure refreshment. It is. And It was actually eight and a half hour drive. And I arrived like Saturday morning around 1 a.m. And I got home last night. It was almost 11 p.m. But it was so worth it. Just that amount of time in a room with all these different drivers. And I mean, it is an amazing feeling when somebody walks up and says, my goodness, are you Shannon and hugs you and you've never met them before, but you feel like you know them so well because you have that connection on social media and it is amazing. So whether you're eight hours, 13 hours, five minutes away, don't let yourself not go. It is so worth it. I didn't even realize that I was going to go until three o'clock Friday afternoon. That's when I knew without a doubt that I was going. And I don't know about Canada. I, I'm, I'm, I'm working on it. I don't know about leaving the country yet, up but I am working on it. <laughs> but um, it, it really is an amazing feeling. And like Tiffany said, get there. You'll be so amazed. A lot of people might feel like I did it in the, in the beginning. You know, it's just going to be like a Zoom. I'm just going to hear the same things over and there, but you don't. Absolutely, you don't. It's more personalized. And you're not just hearing from leaders. You're hearing from people that's on the same level with you, your side sisters. and things that you were struggling with and you don't talk about 
you find out others are struggling with it too. And now you have camaraderie to be able to discuss those things with. And that is like one of the most amazing things ever when you can have somebody that knows what you're going through to talk to. And you don't have to go through it alone anymore. And you can work through it together. Um, it is 7.30. I like, I really don't know what else to talk about because it's just a great day. It's a great morning. If anybody else has anything to say, let me know. If not, I do. we can go ahead. I'm standing in my kitchen with my arm up. I'm like, I, I want to talk. I want to talk. Um, but... <laughs> Like you can't see me, um, but you guys, mon wow, more, no, Monday, there we go, Monday motivation, I don't know why that was such a tongue twister, so um, before the training, um, my family and I were actually on vacation in Tennessee, yes, I live in Ohio, but we came from Tennessee, okay, <laughs> we just kind of, my husband looked at the, the truck thing, we, we drove 1,700 miles total um, in 10 days, but um, we came from Tennessee and I don't know if you guys, you know, the great smoky mountains, absolutely beautiful. Absolutely amazing. 2016. All right. November of 2016, there was the biggest wildfire that they had ever seen in the great smokies. Okay. Literally over 11,000 acres destroyed. Um, and the smokies are very, very near and dear to our heart. We go probably four times a year. My grandparents live down there. We were married down there. Um, my second daughter's middle name is Cade for Cade's Cove. So, I mean, they are very near and dear to our hearts. Um, literally, we watched as buildings, houses, everything was destroyed. Just these wildfires, they could not stop. They just kept spreading. Um, and you know, after, I don't, I don't remember how long it was, but after it was 11,000 acres total that was destroyed and the next spring we went because nothing, nothing will stop us from going, you know, home. Um, the next spring we went and mind you, it was five or six months after the fires, I broke down. We went and everything was black. Nothing was alive. Um, the charred rocks, charred trees, empty concrete slabs where there were people's homes, um, you know, X's on trees, just the whole nine yards. It looked like a bat. It, it was, it was heartbreaking, heart wrenching, but you know what, you guys, we kept going and the smell of fire just lingered, okay? We kept going. But every year that we kept going, it got greener. It got more alive. It got more lush and more beautiful. So I, every year or every time I should say, cause like I said, we go like four times a year. Every time I go, I'm in amazement of mother nature and how the comeback is always stronger than the setback, you guys. So, and I, I shared this as a post on my, um, on my personal page yesterday. So even if personally you feel like things are up in flames right now, like everything could be burning around you. Everything could be just on fire. Remember that you're stronger after. And when we go to visit, are there still remnants? Absolutely. There are still burnt trees. There are still charred rocks. But you know what? That is a reminder. You look at that and then you look at how green and how lush and how beautiful everything is. And the comeback, you guys, is always going to be stronger than the setback. So if you feel like that in life right now, I urge you to just go, go look at that and look at how gorgeous it is right now because the forest is thriving it is thriving right now. Oh, you got me over here trying not to cry. That was so beautiful. Thank you for sharing that with me, with us. I say with me, but it was with all of us, but I feel like it was with me. Anybody else? 
Um, guys, don't forget that the new Frenzy customer promo is launched. Um, make sure you're messaging those new cust those free customers that we all have in our back office who may not have ordered and may not have gotten a sample yet because that is where your gold is at and that's where your PPA will come from is from new orders and new customers. Uh, also, don't forget about Super Sunday training. It's fine, uh, success in your first 60 days and building your team. Um, that kind of stuff will help you guys as well because that is from, I think this time around, it's Drew and Paul and a few other leaders to pour into us as leaders as well. So that kind of stuff. And it was Motivational Monday. I always leave my Motivational Monday. What motivates you? At the end of every Motivational Monday I post, what motivates my followers, my Facebook friends? And that gets you interaction, leaving an open-ended question. Absolutely. I love that. Kayla, you wanted to share something, sweetheart? Yeah, so I was actually, I actually kind of got inspired by this little tip last night while I was doing my like scroll through Facebook. Um, one thing that I'm super passionate about is like that positive vibe, which is why I love coming on here with you guys and, and listening in. Um, people don't realize the power of positivity um, and being positive on your wall. Um, but then with the other side of that, you don't realize how powerful negativity can be on your wall, right? So when you're, you're making your posts, it's so great when people are positive and sharing it. Now, when I say be positive on your post, am I saying to the extent of being fake? No, right? Be real, always be real, but be mindful of the things that you're posting. So as I was scrolling through Facebook, um, this one particular person came through my feed um, and not Thrive related, just a particular person. But as soon as I seen her name, I knew that there was going to be something negative on there. And I knew that when I go through there, because I feel everything, right? As I'm hitting her name, I'm like, I already know something negative is coming, right? And I feel that. And I felt that as just a Facebook friend of hers. So I think it's really important that we are mindful of how we, we discuss things on Facebook um, and the things that you say on your Facebook. Because when you share something negative, like maybe there's something going on, uh, you know, I'll be very generic, you know, maybe your tea in the morning at the coffee shop was black instead of double, you know, two, two and two. Maybe your baby's father, um, you know, is being a dick again. I hope that's okay that I said that. <laughs> being a, being a butt, <laughs> you know, and you want so hard to emotionally post to your wall because we all do that. It's the generation that we're in right now where we emotionally post to our wall because that's where we're gonna get the most ears listening. Uh, but sometimes it's, sometimes restraint is really important depending on the topic. If what you're going through, people can relate to, use that, use your voice as, um, a community tool, for lack of a better word, to be relatable to your audience. But don't use it in a sense that you're going to start a mob, right? We don't want a mob of angry, negative feelings. We want to inspire, to connect, right? And you need to do that through relatability, through positivity. And I think that's really important because negativity breeds negativity. And we don't want that following right? We want positivity. We want positivity breeding positivity. And I think that that no matter how much you do, no matter how much do that you do in your business, the more that you post negative stuff, the more you're pushing away your audience. So everyone that you're building and you're bringing in is going to be distancing themselves because nobody wants to feel like crap. So if I'm reading someone's post and I'm thinking, there she goes again, another complaint, I'm gonna feel less inclined to want to jump on board with you because I don't wanna feel that, right? I don't wanna feel those vibes. So as great as you make this feeling, you're so energized, tomorrow you're gonna to complain about something that maybe you could have worded differently to make it relatable. And then I'm gonna be pulling back from you, right? And I think that's important. I think that's really important on this Motivational Monday. <laughs> Girl, that was amazing. You're gonna to have to get in touch with me about 
um, doing one of these morning zooms. I think everybody, because I know I do, but I think everybody would like to hear more from you. And that brings up a memory before I go ahead and let the reading happen. At this training, I heard from Tiffany about writing your post to that one person. Find what you want to say and talk to one person. And the comments are just going to be amazing because you're being so real. Actually, Tiffany, please, because uh, you explained it so much better than me. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, I was just, um, I was speaking on, you know, posting and, you know, how to post now because we were we were talking you guys I have four years in in November and the way that I posted four years ago makes me want to puke like it was so spammy it was like oh hey buy my thrive it did no okay we have evolved that's what I love constantly evolving um but we were talking about smart posting and you guys when you're making a post so i think the example was rest but i have a personal example i can use okay i have a potential promoter i know her personally you know i, I know her situation okay what i'm going to do i sit down and i write out a post to her okay as i'm writing this opportunity post i am posting it or i'm writing it as if i'm I'm sending it to her without, obviously don't use names because that would be super weird and super not cool. But, you know, personally, her experience is she, you know, was a full-time, you know, full-time worker. She just had a baby and she doesn't want to go back to work. I have been there. That's what happened with my first child. I had her and I was like, I don't want to go back to work. And this was pre-Thrive. I would have done anything, anything for Thrive to pop at that moment. So I am going back to how I felt when I was in her position. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna write up the post, just, you know, probably something or another, you know, I get it, mama. You don't wanna leave your babies every day. You don't wanna see, you know, your babies in the window in the rear view mirror as you head to your nine to five. Something along those lines, okay? Nine to, five. nine to five yeah um she's gonna start singing now um but <laughs> but what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna post that intentionally so before i post that i'm going to go and intentionally interact with her okay liking her stuff commenting replying to her stories that's gonna boost her in my algorithm so that she will see the post okay um another thing i learned from this training is that you can post to a certain group of people. I'm not cool enough to know that. Chast and Lisa brought that up and I was like, what? My mind was blown, you guys. I did not know that you can post just to certain people. So there's another little tidbit, but intentional posting, write out that post like you're speaking to one person because even though you're speaking to that one person, you never know who else because that's a, that's a, that's a general post. A lot of moms struggle with that. A lot of moms don't want to leave their kids every day. I don't know why. I've been a stay-at-home mom for five years, and I'd be like, see ya. <laughs> but, <clears throat> you know, a lot of moms struggle with that, you know. So even though you're writing it to that one person, it will resonate with more. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. That was an amazing tip. And I hope everybody that's here will show up when Wednesday because Brittany Strike and several others, including Tiffany, are going to be sharing. And it is going to be like amazing. And it's going to be recaps of um, Fort Worth training and the Toledo training. Um, so if he's never won, girl <laughs> please if you've never won on the good morning five tribe drop me in the comments 
guy is going to read our 100 days of peace and then I'll pick a winner. All right. So we are on every day. God is spirit and his worshipers must worship in spirit and in truth. John chapter 4, verse 24. God's now you're breaking up a little bit, honey. We should offer. You know, I had a feeling that that might happen. Let me uh, step outside here and see if you guys can hear me a little bit better. I woke up to uh, no power this morning. So, of course, my Wi Fi's out and I have the worst cell phone reception. So, so you're better right. now. Is that better? Yes. All right. Awesome. Perfect. All right. God's word makes it clear. We should offer our creator the praise and worship he deserves, and we shouldn't wait until Sunday morning to do so. Yet, we live in a distraction-filled society that encourages us to make praise and worship a one-day-a-week activity. If we allow the distractions of everyday living to interfere with the practice of regular worship and praise, or if we yield to the countless temptations of our world, we find ourselves engaged in a struggle between good and evil, a clash between God and Satan. Our responses to these struggles have implications that echo throughout our families and throughout our communities. Do you take time each day to worship your fathers in heaven? Or do you wait until Sunday morning to praise him for his blessings? The answer to this question will, in large part, determine the quality and direction of your spiritual life in good times and in turbulent times. Every day provides opportunities to put God where he belongs, at the center of our lives. When we do so, we worship him not only with our words, but also with our deeds, and that is how it should be. For believers, God comes first, always first. Our quotes for today are, I am the opinion that we should not be concerned about working for God until we have learned the meaning and delight of worshiping him by A.W. Tozer. Worship is a daunting task. Each worships differently, but each should worship by Max Lucando. To worship him in truth means to worship him honestly, without hypocrisy, standing open and transparent before him. Anne Graham Lotz. For further reflection, um, Kings 2, chapter 17, verse 36. Psalm chapter 95, verses 6 through 7. Chapter 100, verse 2. Romans chapter 12, verse 1, Hebrews chapter 12, verses 28 to 19. Today's prayer. Heavenly Father, let today and every day be a time of worship. Let me worship you not only with words and deeds, but also with my heart. In the quiet moments of the day, let me praise you and thank you for creating me loving me and guiding me and saving me. Amen. Thank you so much. And uh, let's see, let me do this. Um, Agatha, you are our winner today. Um, if you can please message me, last name C-O-C-H-R-A-N in messenger and i will get your information send you the graphic and congratulations all right everybody i will see you all on wednesday have a great monday and go motivate people ladies that helped thank you so much for jumping in bye